I'm going to begin um, by asking how you came to be involved with this project and what it was that attracted you to getting involved. I was sent a script um, and the idea of making a real kind of high octane thriller in Paris really appealed to me. And then the notion that Idris might be involved made it um, irresistible really because he was an actor I really wanted to work with. Because I mean this is your first sort of deviation away from the horror genre as a director. I was wondering was it a sort of conscious effort and was it quite important for you to, to, to try something new and sort of show off your range as a filmmaker at this quite early stage of your career still? Definitely. And I wanted to, it, it was also I wanted to, to explore other areas. It was a, less a career move but just sort of creatively wanting to try different things. And um, horror is, is very pure in that it's very visual cinema and so is action in that way. And so to, to, I thought, oh, I'd love to, you don't really often get an opportunity to make a really big, mounted action film in this country, you know? And so seeing that opportunity, I grasped it. So do you think that the ho uh, your time sort of spent in the horror genre, that sounded like it was sort of going to prison or something, um, served, you, served you well though in a sense that, you know, just get coming to terms with that kind of intensity and suspense, I mean, that does lend itself very well to high octane thrillers of this nature. Well, I'm really interested in tension and held and sustained tension in film. And, and I think that's something that I've tried to explore in films that I've done in the past, and that's something that I wanted to bring to this. I wanted it to really be an edge of your seat, white knuckle, 90 minute thrill ride. Um, and so I think hopefully I was able to bring some of those skills in, or, in order to keep that going. I mean, as, as you mentioned, Idris Elba was obviously a draw for, uh, for mm. you to, to get involved, and he's obviously a huge draw for people to go and see it as well. And he's just terrific. He's got some real screen presence, hasn't he? He's got amazing screen presence, Idris, and actually that's one of the things that we discussed in terms of this character, Briar, that he plays, is that he's got such screen presence, it's like, and Briar being this sort of this granite wall, this really kind of hard, no-nonsense character, and, he, and it's all about him doing as little as possible. Some of the references we talked about, you know, with De Niro and well, early Pacino and um, Lee Marvin films, you know, uh, you know, Point Blank and stuff like that, these guys, Idris doing as little as possible, really, and because he's got so much of that screen presence. But given, uh, I mean, obviously, Idris, Richard, and uh, Kelly are all mm. British. Mm. They're all speaking American accents in this. I was just wondering, was that, was that kind of just to tap into the Hollywood market, or what was the kind of reason? Or was it a creative They were written decision? as American characters, and mm. those were the actors that I ended up casting. And I sort of feel we're in a world now where, you know, Kelly lives in America, Idris, you know, he's done The Wire, it's the, the sort of currency, it's a, it doesn't really matter, we've got Brits coming here, Americans going there, so just I thought, well, it, it, these are really great actors, they can play the roles, we had, you know, they were prepped with dialogue coaches every day, and then we have dialogue people in the ADR to check the dialogue at the end, so everything, you know, if there's a line, that, an accent that is slightly off, you can pick that up in ADR and make sure that, you know, experts checking every single thing so that the accent is very specific, so it's really all about trying to get the best actors that I could. I could see sort of Guy Ritchie influences this, but is that is that a sort of a conscious inspiration for you? Or is, is it just one of those things where he's so kind of become so ingrained in this particular genre in British cinema yeah. that it's almost just happens naturally? I, I don't know, really. I mean, I didn't particularly think of Guy Ritchie. I mean, I was thinking more back to films like 48 Hours, Walter Hill movies from the 70s, you know, and elements like that. So those that, that, that they were more my frames of reference, I think. And I watched um, Eden Lake again recently. I absolutely adore that movie. Well, thank you. And of course, you worked with the Fass in that one. Was it apparent at that stage that this is an actor who's going to go right to the very top? Well, I mean, in terms of career trajectory, who knows? But it was very apparent that Michael is one of the most talented actors you will ever work with, and, and committed, and just he's just quality on screen. I mean, actually, also in that film, there was Jack, young Jack O'Connell. Yeah. So Michael and Jack, and uh, just two incendiary actors, and you just yeah, you can they just they just burn quality. And of course, Kelly Riley was also involved yeah. in that, and she's in this. Um, I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the word underrated, but I, I do feel that she is because she she brings so much nuance to any character yeah. that she portrays. I mean, yeah. she must be a real pleasure to direct. Kelly is. Kelly's just quality, um, and to, to get her in this movie was, you know, I was really keen to do it. And absolutely, she's she's a very, very clever and thoughtful actor, and 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 has a kind of restrained stuff. And it was, you know, even though it's a small part, she brings a lot to it. And you, you, you in in a sense, you're frustrated because I just, you know, I wanted more of Kelly, but but you know, the, the, she's not the lead role. But yeah, I, I definitely work with Kelly again in a heartbeat. And was it quite a challenge for you in some regards to kind of balance the... Because there is something quite comedic about this endeavour, mm. particularly the kind of dialogue and the chemistry between the lead mm. characters. Um, and with the kind of the thrilling aspects and, mm. and the, the kind of severity of, of the narrative mm. at hand, was that quite a tough 
thing to navigate. Well, again, yes, it, it is. But I was keen. I mean, again, looking back to some of those films from the 70s where, where we Clint Eastwood film, like, you know, if you look at the Dirty Harry films or if you look at 48 Hours or if you look at even the original Beverly Hills Cop, those films, the, they play the, the, the violence and the, and, and the action, they play raw and real and gritty. It's not jokey. Violence isn't jokey. But at the same time, hopefully, you, th there are moments of character where humour can come out between the, and it's, but it's humour coming out through the, through the interaction of the characters and that gruff and raw and, and sort of salty humour that you can have there. And, and to try and get those two things to coexist, I think, I think it's nice to have light and shade within a film. Of course, over the past few months, the film has become sort of regrettably relevant. I was just wondering if this required a, a fresh edit after the Paris attacks, because it's become an even more delicate subject mm. to have a terrorist attack in that particular city. Yes, obviously in the film, has, the release has been delayed and, and we shot the film well in advance of all of this, but with, you know, we had French crew and we had you know, a lot of French actors and everybody very mindful and, and concerned and you know, what's happened is tremendously sad. The film isn't really about terrorism, it's about, you know, it, it's, it's a Friday night fun action movie, but it, it glances at some of the social anxieties, I think, that are sort of prevalent in all societies and all cities. And, um, I think if we make films and if we make anything, you know, in some way it has to, exi it, you know, it has to, has to. I, you know, I come from background in horror films, where, you know, horror, the best horror films for me reflect what's going on in society. So I think to touch on those things is is is, is valid and legitimate. And uh, my final question then is just, what's next for you? Have you got any other projects in the pipeline? I've got a couple of films. Brewing, whether they actually <laughs> brew, you never know. Um, and I'm developing a TV series um, with BBC One about mafia. Oh, cool. uh, do, do you think that these days do, do your sensibilities as a, as a filmmaker can lend itself more so to to the sort of smaller screen to TV than it ever has done? Yeah, look, the the, the differences between film and television are constantly eroding, um, and it's all about what's the best story, what's the most interesting story, and it's not necessarily whether it's on the big or small screen. Brilliant. We're looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you Cheers, very much. Thank appreciate you. it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, yeah. Is that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!